Amen. Uh, today we are going to do lecture seven, and uh, this is what I want um, uh, us to do, and this is how we start. I'm going to be teaching today about the concept called crowding out effect. So, when you talk about the crowding out effect in this um, uh, context, we are saying that government expenditure increases and then um, um, uh, 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 eventually it leads to investment to, to decrease. So now you can see that this is the government or public sector expenditure and then this is the private sector investment. So these are the firms. So therefore the government expenditure increasing, eventually it crowds out the, 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 the real investments in the system, right, in the private sector. Right, so how does it work? Um, I'm going to show you the chain here and then we will go down to um, explain it on the graph. But now we start by saying that um, when government expenditure increases, we know that what is going to happen is the, the total expenditure or the aggregate demand is going to increase. And you know that when the total expenditure increases on your 45 degree line, then your output is going to increase. That is exactly, this is the immediate thing. So we say this is the primary effect. Primary effect. So that is exactly what happens. But now, when the income increases, people tend to demand more money for transaction purposes. So now, in the secondary effect, we are saying that when, let me just say, as income increases or output increases, then what is going to happen? Um, a, a, a demand for money. People will demand more money. But we know, like, we can throw that on the money market diagram, and you will see that when people demand more money, then the interest rate is going to increase. I mean, you will remember that what you have seen is that uh, when interest rate increases, now the investment is coming down. Can you see that now the investment is coming down? So when the investment is coming down, we are saying that um, uh, uh, total expenditure now is going to decrease. And when total expenditure now is decreasing from where it is, and then we are saying um, um, the, 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 the output is going to decrease a little bit. It's going to decrease a little bit. So that is exactly what is happening. So I want you to practice this chain reasoning to say when government expenditure increases, total expenditure will increase and then output will increase. So that is economy, economy will grow. But in the secondary um, effect, we are saying that as output increases, this causes people to demand more money. And then if people, people are demanding more money, the interest rate is going to decrease. It's going to increase. And then investment will decrease, total expenditure will decrease, and then output will, will decrease. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, maybe draw it here so that we can all see it. Just keep that in mind. Okay, let me draw it here. And, 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 and now what I do is I draw the first one and I say this is money and then this is interest rate. It is the origin. And then this is investment and then this is interest rate. And then this is our real sector which is Keynesian model. So this is going to be um, output and expenditure and this will be the 45 degree line where expenditure is equal to income or you can just write 45 degree line so let me show you what happens remember money supply function right is written this way money supply and then money demand function is written this way money demand so you can see the money market where these two intersect which is here they form market interest rate interest rate one and then the investment curve is a curve that looks like this but when the interest rate is here, which is interest rate one, which we took from here, you can see. And then investment will be here, I1. So now you can see the way into investment is determined. But when I1 is here, now let me draw the, the total expenditure line here, where the total expenditure 
it shows that C plus I1. Now I take in investment from here because now it's the one that is determined here. Plus I1 plus G, maybe plus NX, whatever the case might be. So now, this is the equilibrium here. So with the equilibrium, we say we've got output here, I1. So what happens is what? We are saying now, suppose government expenditure increases. You see, now we start here. Government expenditure increases. So therefore, total expenditure will increase. Total expenditure is this line. So let me show you total expenditure increasing. Total expenditure increasing, it means this line will go up. You can see that this line is going up. Now we've got what? We've got C plus I plus G1 now. You can write G1 there because now government expenditure is, is, has increased. So now we, we start seeing that now this line shifted up. But what is the immediate thing when government increases? Government increasing, now you can see that now the new equilibrium will be what? Will be Y2. Now we move to Y2. Can you see that? But this Y2, it means people have got more income. So now they will demand more money. You see now we come to money demand here. And then money demand is going to shift to the, to the right. Can you see money demand shifting to the right here? And then now we've got money demand 1. That, that's, that's the second one. And then now you can see that the interest rate went up to I2. So now, if you take this I2 and you write I2 here on the investment, you will see that now your investment is going to decrease. You can see now the investment now will come to I2 because now the interest rate went up. So if you work it on this investment line, you will see that actually investment now is going to decrease. So, but now when the investment decreases, it affects the total expenditure now. This total expenditure line now will come a little bit down and this is the final one here. And then now it comes down here is C plus I plus G. And then but now this I is I2. Now you can understand that. So therefore, you will look at the uh, uh, last equilibrium, which is here. And then it goes down. And then between these two Y's down here, we've got Y3. So now it means what? This smaller decrease here of Y is because of the secondary effect. And then that is it. That is the, 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 the what you call... Um, um, crowding out effect and you can see from here that when government expenditure increased and then investment ultimately the secondary effect um, uh, uh, went down so the primary effect is the immediate effect and then the secondary effect is a money market effect so secondary effect every time when we start it we start by saying as income so it means as income decreases or as income increases so you know you will see that when income decreases, we're going to see the opposite of this. So, this is what you now you must go and do at home. Now, when you are sitting alone at home now, I want you to go and try and do the, uh, uh, the, the government expenditure and then try and, 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 and draw it this way. Try, try and draw these three diagrams and then this interest rate, money, interest rate, investment, expenditure and output. And then try and, 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 and start with the money market where you've got money supply and money demand. You've got the investment cap. You've got the total expenditure line, C plus I plus G the, for, for, for the closed economy. But if it's open economy, it will be C plus I plus G plus X minus M. So now you've got the interest rate here, I1. And then with this I1, we put it here. And then you've got the investment one. And then with this investment one is this one that appears there. So what I want you to go and do at home, start by saying government expenditure comes down, decreases. And then that is the, 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 the contractionary fiscal policy. Just remember, yeah, so you must work this one out and then show me the primary effect and the secondary effect. Yeah, so the point to remember here is... Um, Remember, when the government expenditure increases, we call it expansionary monetary policy. And basically, this is used to solve what? Unemployment problem or low growth. Right. But now, when government expenditure is going down, this is called contractionary
Oh, sorry. I think I said one trillion. It must be fiscal. It must be fiscal here. Ne? Fiscal, sorry. Because one trillion has to do with money. Sorry. And then contractionary fiscal policy. So I hope that you will enjoy doing this and then you will enjoy repeating it many times. Remember, guys, we are connected on the WhatsApp group. So if there is anything that you do not understand, do not hesitate to ask me and then and then and then and then I will be able to help you. So this crowding out effect will form part of our second test. So therefore, it means uh, you must incorporate it into your second test, which will be probably one week after the first test. So guys, I will talk about the second test very, very soon. And uh, I hope that you will enjoy this crowding out effect and learn it, learn it off my heart, learn it every day. Throw these diagrams, throw them again, over and over again. And then in that way, you will be able to uh, understand what is going on. And, 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 and of course, um, I wish you all the best. The exam is very soon, it's gonna be very soon. And I want you to learn these things, go through the video over and over again. And even these papers, I'm going to um, upload them for you on the web so that you are able to use them as well. Thank you very much.